but that's just the nicest way of saying, what a fucking weirdo. <laughs> and it's taken me a long time to accept it, but now I just brag about it. You know, it is quirky that I wear my glasses 24-7. Shower, sleep, sex, my glasses are always on. Uh, it is quirky that my Get Hype playlist is all songs from Broadway musicals. Have you ever pre-gamed to Hamilton, you guys? I'm telling you, it's the best. Yes, I have not. It's great. Uh, it is quirky that my favorite Star Wars character is Jar Jar Binks. I'm telling you, he's a fucking weirdo. I can relate to him. Uh, there was a time, though, I was called quirky and I didn't love it. Uh, I had a manager that used to use the word quirky to describe me to everyone at work. And I thought that was such an odd word to use until I realized she couldn't use punctual because I was late every day. And she couldn't use professional because I cried at my desk almost every day. She couldn't use dependable because I quit. So I'll take quirky. Uh, at that job, I worked as a call center rep at a credit union which explains all the crying. It was a hard job because people would tell me to fuck off when I gave them their account balance. Like, I wasn't part of your $400 OnlyFans issue. I don't know. Uh, but if they weren't just telling me to fuck off, they were saying whatever thought came to their mind. Uh, during my time there, I had a few people, men, old men, horny old men tell me that I had the perfect voice to work as a phone sex operator. Now, I don't know what made them say that. My phone would ring and I answer and I say, thank you for calling the credit union. This is Heather. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with today? Apparently, they heard, hi. This is Heather. How can I pleasure you today? <laughs> but I could never actually work as a phone sex operator because I can't talk sexy. I actually can't be sexy. I've tried. A few years ago, I tried to surprise my husband by being sexy. I put on the music. I put on the lingerie. I put on the strap-on. I did everything. <laughs> that I could have done for him, right? He was surprised. And he loved it. He picked me up and threw me on the bed, right where I had set my glasses. So all that work, we didn't even have sex because it was four o'clock on a Friday and I needed to call my eye doctor before they closed. Which explains why I keep my glasses on during sex now. I know that they're safe. A uh, little side note about that story, the first time I told that story on a stage was in front of my parents and my in-laws. <laughs> yeah, it was a little awkward. Uh, not nearly as awkward as my parents asking me what a strap-on is. <laughs> cool. Uh, you know, but overall, I don't feel too weird talking about sex in front of my family. My husband and I do have a baby, so everyone knows we've had sex once. Well, they know I've had sex. I was the one that was pregnant. There's not really any proof my husband was part of it. Except my son does look exactly like my husband or his brother. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, when we were trying to get pregnant, me and my husband, I didn't try with his brother. That was an accident. I was trying with my husband. Uh, when we were trying, we didn't tell anyone. I think that's a weird brag, like, hey, guess how much unprotected sex we're having? <laughs> we're doing it everywhere. The couch, the chair, the floor, the bed, the butt. <laughs> Which does explain why it took us so long to get pregnant. <laughs> but we finally got pregnant and everyone was so happy for us. And I was happy for the first two months because that's when the morning sickness started. And afternoon sickness and evening, really, I was just throwing up all the time. As an added bonus, every time I threw up, I peed my pants. Uh, so after a couple of times,
points of flooding my bathroom and pee, I switched to adult diapers. Brian could have used that coupon a little while ago. Um, so remember when I told you I can't be sexy? The adult diapers really added to that. Yeah, so my pregnancy was great. I had this beautiful pregnancy glow that was just toilet water backsplash. And this great pregnancy waddle that was just me walking in my pee-filled diaper. Really a magical time. Uh, after that, my husband and I decided no more kids. So he scheduled a vasectomy. And actually, yesterday was his one-year anniversary of the vasectomy. Normally, it's not something I would pay atten attention to, but the fact that his appointment to stop spreading his seed was done on Earth Day, I remember it. Yesterday was Earth Day, you guys. Yeah. So leading up to his appointment, I tried to be the best wife. I said, honey, are you nervous? Is there anything that I can do to help you through this difficult time? And my friend overheard me and she said, Heather, do you remember like a year and a half ago when you were sliced in half like a magician's assistant to bring that baby into the world? They can take the scissors to his balls and he will be fine. You guys, I'm here to tell you, he made it through. He's fine, he's at home shooting blanks right now, everything's okay. But I did learn quickly, there's a great benefit to having a husband who has a vasectomy. Guess how much unprotected sex we're having. We're doing it everywhere. The couch, the chair, the floor, the bed. Not in the butt. We've been married for six years. That's over. Way over. Uh, so in March, I turned 31, which means I'm no longer 30. I'm in my 30s. And I've learned some great wisdom being in my 30s. I can no longer drink like I'm still in my 20s. That was a surprise. I had not uh, anticipated so instead of drinking, now I get high. Yeah, yay, thank you. Um, and being a mom who gets high is a little weird because other moms like to judge me for it. And then I give them their fourth glass of red wine and they forget all about it. <laughs> yeah. But actually, the thing is, getting high is better for my health. Um, when I used to drink, I would drink so much that I would just pass out anywhere which included the middle of the street. Yeah. Uh, but when I get high, I pick a spot on the couch and I don't move for four hours. <laughs> Unless Bye 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 comes on, because I am not sitting this out. I'm getting up for that. Uh, it's also more financially responsible for me to get high. Uh, when I would drink a lot, I would like to go online shopping. Uh, the last time I did that, I spent $200 on three things. I bought a board game that four years later has still only been played once. I bought a dog Christmas collar in July, and I have cats, so I gave that away. And then I bought a $150 vibrator. <laughs> yeah, now that I did keep for myself, and it's definitely been played with more than once, so at least I got my money's worth out of that. Uh, and it's not to say I don't online shop when I'm high, it's just exclusively DoorDash. Like, I can get delivered right to my door. Slurpees, Frosties, Taco Bell. Now by the time I get it off my porch, the drinks are melted and the food is cold because they rang the doorbell an hour ago and I forgot. <laughs> uh, but it's still there, it's still there. And listen, the whole point of this is to tell you that getting high is better than drinking. And I know it might sound crazy, but it ain't no lie. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Heather Van Gallo, thank you guys so much. Any children in the audience? Any children? All right, you're probably home playing video games. These kids these days, man, everybody's me. You know, they talk trash about kids in video games these days, but when I was a kid, there was a game called Leisure Suit Larry. Anybody know that game? Yeah, Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards came out in 1987. I think like that and Oregon Trail were the two top games back then. That's right, Leisure Suit Larry was a game that you were a guy named Larry and you'd hang out at a bar 
And the goal of the game was to pick up and consequently bang a hooker in the back room of that bar. That's how you won. Yeah, very similar to Oregon Trail, but instead of getting dysentery, uh, you'd get syphilis. That was the difference with that game. So anyway, that game, uh, since I was playing that at eight years old, I'm not gonna give kids a hard time these days. And actually, in fact, that game, that game, my life would be different. I wouldn't have kids right now because that game gave me the experience I needed to meet my ex-wife. That's exactly how that happened. <laughs> uh, watching the news, um, I saw that NASA announced that they're looking for people with uh, disabilities to travel to space. They say like, you know, people with like, immunities to motion sickness or certain movement disabilities can be an advantage in space. I think that's amazing. Uh, great for NASA and great for those people. Uh, they wanted to announce that they're uh, looking for people of short stature. You know, they take up less room in the spacecraft, probably eat less food. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, midgets in space. I never thought I would live to see the day. That's one small step for man. And one even smaller step for mankind. It is. <laughs> also on the news, cryptocurrency. Everybody's losing their ass on cryptocurrency. You know, if I can't take investment advice from Kim Kardashian, who can I take investment advice from? What are we doing? I don't invest in cryptocurrency, never did. You see, my investment philosophy is I don't invest my time, energy, or money into things I don't understand. Which is probably the reason I'm divorced. <laughs> Think about it. I am divorced, but I'm married. Uh, my wife's back there. Beautiful wife. Um, thank you. Uh, she has a son. That means I'm obviously a stepdad, and I love being a stepdad. I do. Uh, I think the thing I like most about being a stepdad is I don't have all the financial or emotional responsibilities of a real father. Uh, but I get all the benefits of fucking his mom. <laughs> Did you see at the Boston Marathon the other day, a guy got caught like pooping in somebody's backyard. Yeah, he got, like, there's a picture of him, it's hilarious. These people, they run, they don't even stop, they just go full stride, right? Anyway, I'm a runner, I got motivated, I wanted to be my personal best time. Six miles, 45 minutes. Thank you. I was out on a run, and I was just about done, and I had to go to the bathroom. And we're among friends, I had to go number two, it's a little bit awkward to talk about. So anyways, I just kind of peeled my shorts back, wet my hand, tossed it to the side. I know. The guy next to me was like, holy shit, man, you almost hit me. God damn, you're motivating. You know, and I'm glad I did, though. I'm glad I didn't stop because I looked down at the screen on that treadmill. No, and I read 39 minutes. I knew. I knew I had succeeded. And my accomplishment wasn't lost on anybody, because even the manager of that health club congratulated me as he escorted me out to the parking lot. And I saved $20 a month because I'm no longer allowed at either Kalamazoo, Michigan, Planet Fitness location. According to the letter I received, I'm no longer allowed at any Planet Fitness location. But we'll see. Uh, speaking of no longer being allowed at a specific location, thanks for having me. My name is Barton James. Have a good night. I love sitting in front of heat vents, but if I sit there too long, I start to sweat, and then my ass and groin area starts to alternate between swampy wet and desert dry. I'm a little afraid that by doing that, I might accidentally create a more durable breed of pubic lice. Recently, I was thinking about Kim Kardashian's ass. I don't know if she gets swamp ass like I do. 
But with an ass that big, she probably gets excellent airflow down her ass crack <laughs> to cool it down and evaporate any butt sweat. What, isn't that what you think about when you see Kim Kardashian's ass? Salt preserves food. I think it does the same thing for people because the salt for my profuse butt sweat has kept my butt skin silky smooth. My butt sweats when I'm nervous and I'm terrified of heights. So if I ever rode a ski lift in the summer, the ski lift seat would turn into a butt sweat water slide of death. When I'm nervous, I also get hot and gassy, almost like I've become the heat vent that I love so much. Although, unfortunately, not gassy enough to blow dry my butt sweat. I also sometimes have to take nervous shits, which I like to call stress pebbles. I actually had to drop some stress pebbles a few minutes ago because I'm nervous about this bit about stress pebbles. <laughs> My bowels are like so meta. In high school, some bullies threw toilet paper at me and called me gay slurs because they caught me laying down some stress pebbles in the bathroom at school. I guess they thought my stress pebbles were fruity pebbles. <laughs> They eventually stopped bullying me because the lead bully died in a car accident. He threw toilet paper at me and tried to hit me like I was a uh, dartboard. So his karma was in a car hit him like he was a pinata. His toilet paper with skid marks collided with me. So his karma was in a car left skid marks and collided with him. He threw things at me and treated me like I was the trash. So his karma was in a car, treated him with a crash. I just rhymed. I'm like Dr. Seuss if he endured abuse for dropping a deuce. If I'm at work and I have to fart, I peel an orange to cover the smell. That also deters my coworkers from wanting to steal my oranges. <laughs> the janitors on every floor of the office building where I work clean the men's rooms at exactly 6 p.m., presumably in a coordinated and passive-aggressive attempt to get me to shit my pants in my car when I'm stuck in traffic on the way home. <laughs> Walking to the bathroom makes me not have to go anymore. Walking back to my cubicle makes me have to go again. Too bad I don't have my own office with a waterproof trash can, which would be an excellent way to get revenge on those passive-aggressive janitors. That joke will probably prevent me from ever getting my own office. I think public restrooms should have vending machines with softer, more comfortable toilet paper in them in order to be keep people from getting pissed off and vandalizing them, they should donate some of the proceeds to charity in a campaign that I'd call Shit for Brains. <laughs> if COVID ever flares up again and we have lockdowns, I think grocery stores should let creative people like me stand in the empty toilet paper aisle and sell copies of our screenplays. Because paper is paper, right? And who cares what happens to your screenplay after they read it? Um, if an animal sees a person wearing a tie, I bet they think the tie is a tail and that a person can shit out of the center of their chest. One time I clogged my toilet and I realized I didn't have a toilet plunger and the idea popped in my head that I could ask my neighbor, who I'd never met, if I could borrow his toilet plunger. I didn't actually do that, 
because the emotional part of my brain was horrified and disgusted at the idea of someone asking a stranger for a toilet plunger. But the rational part of my brain just doesn't see why it's that big of a deal. I guess um, if, someone's, if a stranger's going to come to your door and ask for something, the best case scenario is that it's an adorable little girl asking to sell Girl Scout cookies, giving you the mental image of delicious, pleasant smelling cookies. This is new, I'm working on it. Um, the exact opposite of that is a disheveled, fat man asking to borrow a toilet plunger, giving you the mental image of disgusting, horrid smelling shit. That one's not that good. Um, if somebody's choking to death, you can save their life by blowing really hard into their asshole. <laughs> or at least make the last stop before they die one of confusion rather than terror. Recently, a female comic came up to me after my set, and she said I'm the only male comic she knows who can do his entire set on butt stuff <laughs> and not make it sexual. <laughs> I took that as a compliment, like my childish gross-out jokes had somehow become progressive. So not only are my bowels like so meta, they're also woke. But unfortunately, they're waking up right now. <laughs> so I gotta go. <laughs> Not really, though. Yeah, I didn't get the light, I don't think. Um, if you don't want your daughter to do porn, tattoo her anus brown so she can't bleach it. I invented the Heimlich Maneuver for constipation. At least that's what I tell the people I want to shit on. When I die, I want my coffin to look like a giant penis. I want my pallbearers, or ball bearers, to be my most homophobic relatives. I want my gravesite to be strategically placed between two small hills that look like a giant ass. I want me and my penis coffin to be lowered head first into my grave. I don't know if I said that right. And then raised up again. Then lowered again. Then raised up again. Then lowered again. Then I want to be liquefied with acid so I shoot out of the tip of the penis coffin. What can I say? I just love nature. I bring new meaning to the phrase laid to rest. One time I accidentally left my credit card at a restaurant and that gave me the idea uh, for an alarm that sounds like a fart that goes off if your credit card gets more than like 300 feet from your phone. The alarm will prevent you from leaving when you forget your credit card. The fact that it sounds like a fart will provide a threat of public humiliation to make you more vigilant to prevent you from forgetting the credit card in the first place. I don't think I have any more shit jokes. Um, maybe I'll end on that. My name's Tom Oma. Thank you very much. When I get nervous, I have to poop. And I was with my girlfriend the other day, and I'm like, ooh, I think I'm getting nervous. Brian sent me the message about doing this show, and I said, I think I need to go to the bathroom. So I took about two steps, and I was like, uh-oh. She goes, what? I said, I think I had an accident. She goes, did you? I said, I don't know. I need to go check. So I go in the bathroom and I look and there's nothing there. I'm like, whew, got lucky with that one. So I go to the bathroom, I drop about 10 pounds. And when I got done, I wipe like you do, you know, and you wipe and you fold it over and I look at it and there's nothing there. I'm like, what the hell? I feel like I'm being robbed right now. I put a lot of work into this and there's nothing there to show for it. And it took me a minute to realize that I have invisible poop. 
So I looked back at my shorts and I thought, man, I probably shit all over myself. I just can't see it because it's invisible. So I took my clothes to my girlfriend. I go, hey, will you wash these? And she goes, did you have an accident? I go, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. So she looks in, she goes, there's nothing in here. And I go, it's invisible. Just wash it, please. So she comes back five minutes later with my clothes. And I go, what are you doing? She goes, I washed them. I said, how could you wash them and dry them in five minutes? She goes, easy. I use the invisible washer and the invisible dryer. <laughs> Whatever. I was with my kids over the holidays, and I have two daughters. And uh, you ever see someone do something really weird that you're like, what the hell did they just do? My daughters did this sneeze, but they hold it in, so nothing actually comes out. So they're like, I go, what was that? She goes, I sneezed. I go, that's a sneeze? I go, are you okay? She said, yeah, I just hold it in. Said, okay, whatever. So one day I was in the store, and my arms were full, and I felt one coming on. And I'm the type of guy, when I sneeze, stuff comes out all over the place. So I'm like, oh no, I can't do this right now. I can't do this right now. So I'm like, hold it in. So I, I blew out both eardrums and shit myself instantly. I was like, please be the invisible poop. Who's married here? Anybody married? One person to yourself. Okay. Don't ever have to worry about the sex stuff, huh? It's always a go. When you're married, you have to come up with date night to keep the spunk in a relationship. My ex-wife was a freak. She wouldn't do date night. We had to have date rape night. <laughs> See, we lived in an apartment. She wanted me to go around back, crawl in the window, do my thing, and crawl back out. She said, when you come through that window, you better bring your A-game, because I'm going to fight you off. I was like, shit, bitch. If I think I'm going to get laid, it's on. So I put on my Spider-Man underoos. For those of you who know what those are. And I crawled through that window and I'll tell you what, she had the strength of a man. At one point, I found myself on the bottom with my pants being pulled down. If it wasn't for my ninja skills and the fear of having something stuck up my butt, I might have been in trouble. But I managed to take care of that and get out of there only later to find out that I crawled in the wrong window. Somebody knows where that window is. <laughs> so needless to say, I got a divorce and moved in with a neighbor. And then he wanted a commitment. <laughs> That's where I gotta draw the line, man. But that would explain the strength of a man and the hairy butthole. I thought my wife just took on some bad personal hygiene habits. But if you're gonna have sex, guys, use condoms. Please be safe. I stopped one night and bought a box of condoms on my way to visit a girl, and the clerk asked me, need a bag to go with that? I said, no, man, she ain't that fucking ugly. <laughs> Same window. He said, the bag is for you, douche. I said, oh, well, then we better double bag it for her safety. <laughs> but if you're going to use a condom and you're going to have anal sex, you may need a lubricant. If you're going to have anal sex, do not use toothpaste. It says right on the tube, fights cavities. <laughs> Some of you might need to let that sink in. And it's not lying. My ass is still burning. But she has fresh breath.